You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in, for listening, for downloading. I am so excited to hop on the pod with you and share. It is a gorgeous, sunny day here in Vancouver, Canada. I was just laying out in the sun, listening to the Robcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts. He is my favorite spiritual teacher to follow. Him, I love him. I mean, obviously him and Jordan Bach and Gabby B and Michael Bernard Beckwith. Oh my God, I follow a lot of spiritual teachers. Okay. (laughs) Anywho, I wanted to hop on the pod today and talk about quitting. Mmm, quitting. Quitting has such a negative connotation. And today on the pod, I want to turn that around a little bit for you. Now, this episode in particular is supported by my friends at Teachable. So Teachable is my favorite tool for online course creation. And if you are looking to bring a project or an idea to life and you've got something to say and you want to share it with the world, I would definitely recommend making it into an online course. Also, when you do get your stuff started and you do put things together, if you use the link in the show notes to sign up for Teachable, you get access to three free classes on how to build your first online course and totally hit it out of the park, totally for free. And they have a thousand dollars in value that you just get because you're an amazing divine listener of the show. And you even have the option to get eight free weeks of live coaching with the Teachable team themselves. So peeps, if it speaks to you and calls to you, the link is in the show notes. And we're going to hop right into this episode. All right, my friends. So quitting. Mm, Quitting, quitting, quitting. Every time I say that, it reminds me of that scene in Eat, Pray, Love when Elizabeth Gilbert is trying to divorce her husband and her husband is going quitter 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 he was like just going on and on about it and this concept of quitting is so demonized in our world it's like you gotta stick with it you gotta keep going you gotta push through you gotta get to the other side and sometimes we have that tiny little intuitive voice that says "Mm, this isn't right or Uh, I don't think so. Or, "Mm, I don't know about this one. Or, ooh, I know I've been doing it like this for a long time, but you know what? It's starting to feel different now. This, my friends, is what I want to share with you today is this concept of quitting. I love quitting. I celebrate quitting. I love quitting. Quitting is one of my favorite things. (laughs) Quitting stuff that's not working is one of the most liberating things you can do in your life because to have more areas of your life that you love and do more things that you love, the easiest way to do that, instead of rebuilding a totally new life of, you know, dumping your current gig and moving to Bali and starting up your business and doing your soul's work, before you do a crazy bold move like that, try Just getting rid of the stuff that's not working in your life as is and see what you are left with. Try quitting what's not working. One of the questions I always ask for coaching clients and one of the things I share on my uh, intake form when people come and apply for coaching is this question of what's not working in your life. I also have a whole section on this that I teach on in In Your Best Life, my course, And I think this is one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself. What's not working? Because I know that when I say that, you thought of some stuff. You're like, oh boy, she knows. How does Kelly know? (laughs) There's X, there's Y, and there's Z. Those three things are not working. Now, another piece here that I want to share with you is that just because you know something's not working, it doesn't mean you have to take action right now. It doesn't mean you have to do anything. It's just having that awareness of like, oh yeah, (laughs) I'm being honest with myself. You know what? This isn't working. This isn't right. This isn't my favorite. I can stop pretending to myself that I like this thing when I actually think it's total shit. (laughs) You know what I mean? You don't have to do anything right away. Eventually, will you do something? Probably. And that's awesome. That's when you, you know, take change and make a shift. And also, if it's not happening right now and you're not changing everything right now, that is also perfect. Awareness is like 80% of the game here. And just knowing that, you know what? 
there's something in my life that's not working and something that I'm yearning to quit. I really believe that quitting is so underrated. Quitting takes a hell of a lot of guts. It takes a hell of a lot of courage and faith and devotion in yourself and a lot of belief in yourself that, you know what, this is the way things are right now. And I want to change and I want to do a pivot. And I know there's something greater for me instead. I can feel it. I can't see it. I can't taste it. I can't touch it. I can't smell it. But there is this part in my soul that sees something different for me. And that, my friends, is why quitting is so special. Quitting is a brand new starting line to something else. I really believe that you should celebrate the things that you quit. Celebrate the times you say no. Celebrate the times you have the courage to speak up and say, hey, that's awesome. And I'm going to pass on that. Thank you. And I'm going to say no. Or you know what? This has been a great job. And I'm going to leave now. That idea of it being an and versus a but. Allowing what is and choosing something else in the present moment. Mm, feels really empowering, hey? I know, right? <laughs> now, a really natural question I get asked a lot is like, well, when do I quit? When is it time for me to quit? And you're probably thinking that too, especially if you're faced with a really big thing that you're looking to quit. For starters, that's a very intuitive answer that should come from you. That's the question you have to ask yourself. I can't exactly tell you when you should quit your job and uh, go work for yourself full time. That's a decision that resonates within you. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who are like, so like, when do I actually quit? <laughs> you quit when you're ready to quit, my friend. You quit your old gig when you're ready to quit. Not what Gary V tells you, not what I did, not what other people you follow online do or how they did it in the past. It's what works for you. You quit on your timeline. But the one thing I will share with you is this idea that the sooner you quit, the better it feels. I'm going to give you a personal example here of a time I quit really early on. Actually, I'm kind of known for quitting stuff. <laughs> I was, I'm going to rewind a little bit. So I was at this dinner. I met this dude in San Francisco and he was kind of a big deal kind of guy. And we went for dinner after this event. And it was one of those things where it was like, we went to a really, really fancy restaurant and I was like, oh my God, okay, this is going to be a lot of money. And he's like, whatever, just order whatever you want. It's on me. It's all good. And he wanted to like talk about my ideas and stuff. And he had, he was like sort of an investor and he kind of like did some cool things and he kind of invested in some small companies. I was like, okay, cool. Like whatever. I'll just go with the flow. And we were sitting in that fancy restaurant and he like pulled up my LinkedIn and he's like, so I looked at your LinkedIn profile. He's like, and I can tell that, um, you've done a lot of things. He's like, yeah, you've done a lot of things for your age. He's like, I also noticed that your time period at different things has been really short. He's like, I feel like I get the sense that you like to do a lot of different things and you don't always stick with it. And the way he said it was in a negative tone and in a negative vibration as if like, if I invest in your startup, who's to say you're going to stick with it because you don't have a track record of sticking with stuff. And in the moment, I kind of felt kind of icky. Like I didn't really know what to say. Now, fast forward to now, I celebrate that fact about myself, that I had the courage to say no and say, this ain't working and have the courage to, you know, leave and pull the plug early, not late. Because there's a lot of people who would wait it out, wait for things to get better Wait for the data to change. Wait for the environment to change. Wait until the boss that you don't like leaves. Wait till that coworker who pisses you off leaves. Wait until you finally get that last chunk of the money that you were promised to if you stuck out your job long enough to finally change. A lot of people thought I was kind of crazy to like throw out all the things I had going for me in San Francisco, throw out kind of my connections, my choices, my really nice apartment, stop living there. I had a lot of awesome stuff going for me and I knew it wasn't working. I knew it wasn't working. And sometimes you might feel this too, where you, you know, like you're like, this is good, but it's not great. There's parts of this that I like, except it's not what I really want. Parts are working and I can see my life here and I can see my future here. And there's something else that's calling my name. It's that something else out in the distance. 
And I know you can't see it or touch it or taste it or smell it. And you got to honor that feeling because that's your tiny intuitive voice coming to pipe up and say, hey, my friend, there's something else out there for you. And one day you're going to find it. So now back to my track record of quitting. (laughs) I have quit many internships. I would quit internships that weren't working. I would just have the really awkward conversation. And sometimes I would be there for the, supposed to be there for like four months of summer. And I remember my first time quitting, I was three months in and I was so depressed. I hated it. I don't usually use the word hate because it's quite a negative word, but I did not like it. And I had to tell my boss that I was going to quit. That's not a smooth conversation to go down all the time. And then a couple summers down the road, I had an internship where I was working at a startup and I quit. I got offered the job. I was like, I started on Monday and I quit by Friday. I was like, this is not working. I don't like this. This is not a fit. I do not enjoy working here. This is not for me. And it was one of the most freeing things. Quitting a job within a week. Being like, you know what? I saw this Monday to Friday and I want out. Now, my friend who took me for dinner that time at that really fancy restaurant would have been like, um, okay, this girl likes to quit. Quitter, 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 quitter. And that's kind of like the role that the ego plays. The ego is all like, you think you're quitting right now? You haven't even tried it. You haven't really stuck it out. You haven't had enough time to data collect. Who do you think you are for quitting right now? Who do you think you are by saying no? Like, girl, like this is good work experience. Why are you trying to quit this? You might not get anything better. This is maybe the only internship you're going to have this summer. So why are you quitting it? The ego loves to play that role. The ego loves to tell those stories. The ego loves to be all like, you are so wrong, girl. Like get your ass back to that little really cold air conditioned cubicle and just sit down and do the work, my friend. And the intuitive loving voice inside you is like, you do what you want. And I'm just letting you know that there's something better out there for you. And I'm going to love you no matter what. If you stay for a year, if you stay for a day, if you stay for a week, and you have always the option to tune into that voice of love that says, I got your back, girl. Don't worry. (laughs) Everything's going to be fine. And then you have the voice out of fear that says, this job has got good money. This job's got good potential. This is where you should be. Notice the word should, (laughs) side note. And the ego will totally, totally rain on your parade, especially if you're trying to think about that thought of quitting anything in particular. Now, a lot of people go with this idea and the idea and the reasoning of, you know, you got to stick with it for a while to figure out what you want. And you just can't quit right off the bat. You got to keep trying. You got to, you know, go on a couple dates to see how this person is. Or you got to stick with the job for a couple months and feel it out. You've got to give it a, give it at least a try. And I think there's some merit to be said in that. Again, you got to use your own intuition and find your own intuitive voice. Some people like to see where things go. Some people like to take more time. Some people like to make the decision and have time to data collect. And that's totally cool. If that works for you, by all means, go for it. I know for me, that's not my style. And speaking from personal experience, the more I can honor my intuition and the more I can strengthen my connection with the divine source, universe, JC, that's a short term for Jesus Christ. (laughs) Not that I ever really talk, I never really say the words Jesus Christ, but you know what I mean? The more I connect with my higher power and my intuition and that deeply loving voice inside me that's guiding me at all times, the more it speaks up more frequently. And I knew that when I quit that summer internship, it Kana was like, this is really a big piece for you. When I quit that internship within a week, I kind of had this feeling that that was sort of a big deal for me, that I had the courage to do that. And that that was like a grown up move. That wasn't like, I'm going to date my high school boyfriend for infinity and just ignore the fact that we had issues. (laughs) This is going to be like, you got it. You did something right. You knew and you listened. Now, a big idea that comes up with this idea of quitting stuff is like this, what if I fail idea? Or what if I can't get something better? Or what if I lose all this money? 
There's all these other what ifs that pop up that are usually quite big. And I, I know that feeling of like, well, if I quit this relationship, will I ever get a better one? And sometimes all you got to go by is the faith and that's all you got. That's all you got. The faith that one day it will get better, that you will find something else. You just got to trust that little voice inside you that has that vision for you, that idea for you, that version of yourself that you see yourself transcending and stepping into. And sometimes that's all you got. Now, when I was younger, like when the stakes were lower, when I was quitting internships and quitting jobs and quitting a lot of the things that I quit (laughs) between university, I quit so many things. I quit organizations that weren't working. I quit volunteering. If it wasn't really working, if I didn't have time, I quit summer internships. I quit jobs. I put in so many resignation letters. I had many times where I had to like have the awkward convo with the boss and say, you know what? It's time for me to go. Now, those stakes were a little bit lower because I was like, well, my fallback plan is going back to school. That's totally cool. That's a perfect excuse. Everybody in college has used that one when we quit our jobs. (laughs) BT Dub was my first job in high school. My humble beginnings was as a slide attendant. I like to share that piece about myself because we all kind of start from square one. (laughs) You know what I mean? And when the stakes are higher... The idea of quitting and jumping off that quitting diving board and into the unknown feels a lot freakier because you ain't going back to school no more. You got to pay your own bills. You got to pay your own rent. You might have kids, dependents, elders to look after. And you're like, this just isn't, you know, my high school gig of working on the slide. (laughs) This is a little bit more. And my dear friend, I feel you. I get that. I really believe that when you are on your path and when you are creating something in your life that's a lot bigger than you, especially if you're starting your own business or dream or endeavor, I really, really believe that business is an act of spirituality and that starting a business and running a business is a spiritual practice. And when you start your thing and when you really start your soul's calling, there's going to be that moment for you of like, this is the fork in the road. This is, you know, all the ways in which I had done it before. This is what I used to do. This is what I went to school for. This is how I know it. Everybody else is going right. And I'm going to go left. I'm going to try it like this. What if it looked like that? And you're like, I know everybody's going to think this is weird. I don't know how I'm going to introduce myself at parties anymore. I know people are going to laugh at me. When I share my ideas, people are like, are you sure? Are you really sure about that? And that, my friends, is when you really know that the quitting is working because you're quitting the old way of doing things. You're quitting your old methodologies that you relied on. You are quitting the old definitions of success that you had carried around potentially for years. I knew that when I made the pivot from my San Francisco Silicon Valley tech life and three failed tech startups to running this really heart-centered biz, which uh, comes from a very different vibrational place in my body, (laughs) that was one of those moments of everything else in my past. And if I look at all the data of my past and what I was good at and things I had gone to school for and what I thought I was groomed and conditioned to do and going... Oh, but what about that? And having the courage to quit that kind of big stuff takes a lot of serious guts and devotion. And once you do, it's like your heart and your soul and your intuition come out to play and they're like, yeah, girl, you did it. Amazing. Now you're on our side. How awesome. That's kind of the feeling you get when you quit. And that's why I really believe that quitting is so powerful. Now, I'm sure you have friends that never quit. They never quit. And you know because they sort of die with a lukewarm heart. It's like those people that you know that just have that job that they hate and they complain about at every family dinner and they didn't do anything about it. Or those people who never really pursued what they wanted and they kind of always are really judgmental towards the people who like 
don't have a home and travel the world indefinitely and go live abroad in Airbnbs forever. Or you have those people in your life that are doing the exact same thing that they did in high school. And they kind of just were the same. They didn't really go through a lot of personal growth. And you maybe you've recently met them or met up with them. And you're like, you're kind of the same person you were in high school. Like, didn't you get the memo to like uh, change and go through some personal growth and uh, change some stuff up in your life and figure out what you really wanted instead? There's a lot of people who don't quit. And a lot of people who just don't say no. A lot of people who don't have the courage to take that little jump off the diving board and kind of go into the unknown or even stand at the edge of the pool and say, what if I just dip my toe in this water? If I just dip my toe in, is the water really that cold? Probably not. Because hey, you could even be standing at the side of a hot tub. And if you dip your toe into the hot tub, you might be like, I like this. This is better than standing out here. (laughs) You know what I mean? You never know unless you dip your toe in. You never know. You never know what's not working until you even ask the question, what is not working for me? So allow yourself to dip your toe into the side of the pool or into the hot tub because you might like it. And most importantly, understand that if you just dip your toe in, it doesn't mean you have to take the full plunge. It doesn't mean you have to do anything. It doesn't mean you have to stay in the pool forever. It just means that you have some awareness. You know of the other possibilities. You understand that there are other ways of doing things. And that, my friends, is so fun. And it's so freeing. Because I, I definitely get it for my friends out there who are in jobs they don't like or doing work that doesn't light them up or they're just continuing where they are for the sake of the paycheck. Just remembering that there are other possibilities out there for you. So you might also naturally ask at this point in our conversation of how do I know if quitting something and ending something is on the horizon for me? Ooh, this is a big question, my friends. How do I know if something is coming to a formal end in my life? Because that can be a little bit of a, a scary, freaky feeling of really going into the black hole of the unknown of like, Um, something's coming to an end. A big chapter of my life might be fading away. Stuff's going to change. Maybe I'm moving. Maybe I'm going into a new relationship. Maybe I am switching careers. Maybe I'm leaving in university and getting a job. And this idea that things are coming to an end. So sometimes this really feels like you are the phoenix. Now, I'm sure you guys studied this in English lit in high school and through Greek mythology, the image of the phoenix, the phoenix dies and is going through the flames and then it is reborn through the ashes and rises back up, which I feel like is such a beautiful metaphor. This idea of having to die to be reborn. That's one of my favorite sentences. You gotta die to be reborn. I remember watching back the videos and I was talking about rebirth or something. I can't remember (laughs) in your best life. And I said that sentence out loud. I was like, holy shit, did those words come from my mouth? Well, that's a really good one. (laughs) Anyways, this idea of the phoenix having to die to be reborn. Sometimes when you know that the end is on the horizon, it can feel like that. It can feel like everything's going upstream shit's hitting the fan, things are getting worse, you are going through the fire, you're going through the burning stage. And I remember really clearly my rising phoenix moment. And I remember very clearly my burning phoenix moment. I was walking on the way to Whole Foods with Chris, because I feel like that's like half of our life, (laughs) walking to Whole Foods to get something to eat. And I remember saying to him, I feel like I'm the phoenix. I feel like I am going through something. And that's all I could articulate. And then my eyes started to well up in tears because I knew I was going through something. Because sometimes before it gets better, it gets worse. This is a lot of times when we feel like we're going to, you know, we're really in the flames. It feels like we're really doing something wrong. And you're looking up at the universe thinking, why me? Why this? Why now? And we were, you know, on our walk to Whole Foods. And this was like, on one of those trips where I would kind of come back home for a bit and then go back down to San Francisco. And I was like, man, things are not good. I don't know what's up. I am 
lost. I am confused. It's not working. I'm not having fun anymore. And I could feel that change was on the horizon. And we all know this. I know you know it too. When you, you know when change is on the horizon. You're like, I can sense it. It's like your sixth sense, you know, your intuition and your gut. And you have this like sixth sense of like, oh, the little flag <laughs> just popped up. And it says, kind of just waving like, oh, change is on the horizon. Or it's like when you're driving a car and the little light goes off. And sometimes it's like an oil light or a gas light or that somebody's door's not closed, but this light lights up when your body is like, oh, change is on the horizon. It's that little indicator light of going ding, 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 ding. And you're like, oh shit, the change is on the horizon. But this is where you got to say, yeah, holy shit, change is on the horizon because you know what? Quitting is good. And if all else fails, you just remind yourself, Kelly Track believes in me and Kelly Track said that quitting is good and that sometimes it's got to get worse to get better. Because all you got to do is remember that after the phoenix burns through the flames and goes to that hot heat and that inferno, it's going to be reborn and it's going to rise from the ashes and it's going to come out even better and more awesome than it ever was before. And that, my friends, is the magic, the magic of quitting. The life-changing magic of quitting and not giving a fuck. Whew, that's a book title if I've ever read one. That's like three book titles smashed into one. But anyways, <laughs> it's so true. When you quit, it's telling the universe that, you know what? You're ready for something new. You're ready for the unseen possibilities to flow your way. You are ready with open arms to the new cool stuff that the universe is sending you. And you are ready for your awesome, amazing, cool life. And the fact that you can't picture it fully or you don't really know and all you got is that feeling and devotion and love in your heart, you're like, this means it's working. Sometimes the friction and the fire means it's working. Except this point when you're the phoenix going through the fire, sometimes people say, oh, this means that my dreams aren't for me or that I can't have that. Or that I'm not going to go through a rebirth, so I'm just going to just end all these ideas and visions of change and just say no to that. Because some people think when it gets hard and it gets difficult and you feel that flames and you feel like change is on the horizon to be like, um, I'm just going to park the car and just sit because I'm too afraid to go into that. And that's when you got to remind yourself that this is good. Quitting is good. Letting go is good. I know it's going to take guts and devotion and you're going to do it. The universe gives us many opportunities to practice our faith and a really big time to practice your faith is through that time when you are the phoenix burning because you're like, well, I'm going to be a new phoenix in a uh, look at my watch uh, a couple hours. Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's knowing that it's going to get better. It's knowing that you have a peace inside of your heart that says it's going to get better. You're going to be fine. You're going to be totally cool and you're going to survive. And it's remembering that and trusting that when it feels like everything's burning down, all the shit is flung around the ceiling. It's like the shit really hitting the fan. I really, here's just a side note, this is so funny, but shit hitting the fan, I didn't realize it was like a metaphor until I actually visualized it. And I was like, oh my God, shit hitting the fan. <laughs> Sometimes I'm slow to catch on to things like that. Oh, other funny side note. I thought that pickles and cucumbers were two different vegetables for a long time until I learned that in like high school. So dot, 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 dot. <laughs> That's okay. Remember that, that podcast episode I did about owning your zone of genius and just forgetting the rest? <laughs> exactly. And remembering that when you are the phoenix and you are going through that moment when the shit is really hitting the fan, you know that, oh, this means I should keep going. Not like keep going with the job you don't like, but keep going on the pathway to my dreams. Keep going and steering right to my vision. Keep going for what I want. Keep going for what I desire. It's like the universe is sort of you know, kind of testing you and be like, do you really want this? Is this really what you want? Is this really, really what you want? Because before you get there, sometimes it's not always smooth sailing. A lot of times people are like, oh, when you start your own business and you quit your job and you go in full time, it's all going to be easy peasy and fresh and clean and beautiful. 
sometimes there's a lot of friction. Sometimes there's a lot of mess. Sometimes there's a lot of moments where you're like, oh, and how exactly I'm going to make money? I don't know about that part yet. And that's a part of the process, my friends. So my friends, that is what I wanted to share with you today about quitting. Yeah. Feels good, hey? Doesn't that feel refreshing? Knowing that you can quit shit in your life that's not working? Knowing that you can have more of what you love in your life by getting rid of the stuff that's currently in your life that isn't very fun? Knowing that you can make room for what you want by saying no to the stuff that doesn't let you up? And also remembering and having the awareness that all you gotta do is just honor the fact that you don't like something. And that's totally cool. And you don't have to change it right now. You don't have to quit your job, your relationship, the house sitting 80 cats at once. You can just accept what is. And just know that you're honoring your heart by being true to yourself. That you know what? House sitting all these cats for my friend isn't really what I want to be doing with my time. Dating this dude isn't really what I want. Being in this career isn't really my favorite. And that's perfect because then you're being true to yourself. And that's all your soul and your intuition really want. Because down the road, you'll get the answers. You'll get the intuitive next step. You'll get the inspired action to make your next move. Just sitting in that space of, yeah, I can be real with myself. And that feels like a good ah, exhale and sigh out. Of like, yeah, now we can be honest now. All right, people. And there you have it, my friends. That is it. That is the show for you today. I hope you like this message. I hope you found this supportive and useful and helpful. And I trust that it has shown something to you or illuminated something for you or give you another perspective to think about. And that quitting is good, no matter what your fourth grade teacher told you. (laughs) Quitting is good. So thank you so much for tuning in, for listening, for downloading. I so love and appreciate you. And if you only take away one thing from this episode, I want it to be the fact that I believe in you. I see you. I hear you. I know that you are yearning something greater for your life. And I, I recognize that in you because I know that you wouldn't listen to this podcast if it wasn't there. And I see that desire in you. And even if nobody else believes in you in your life, I believe in you. And I believe in your possibility. And I believe that you can be the phoenix that rises from the ashes because it's bound to happen, my friend. It's going to be your time soon. So people, thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. And if you love today's episode, um, it would mean the world to me if you took a screenshot, shared it on your Instagram stories and uh, tag me in it. Let me know that you love it. I really appreciate when you give me amazing good feedback on the episodes that you loved and what really resonated with you. That really makes the world of a difference to me in terms of what I create for you going forward. So thank you for your love. You're amazing. You are my favorite and I love you lots and lots and I'll catch you back here soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon. 